You're listening to the Wired for Impact podcast. All right, I'm here with my man, Jeff Hunter. Jeff, it's good to see you, brother. Man, it's always good. And you know what? (laughs) It's so interesting we're having this conversation today because the last time we did this podcast, we were talking about, you know, some virtual assistant stuff. We were kind of going into the crypto world a little bit. And it's just interesting how so much has changed since 2022 Dude, with the wild. emergence of like ChatGPT and yep. what I would consider the low cost access to probably the best tool ever invented since, I don't know, the internet. It's so profound. And it's the reason why I wanted to talk to you today, because I don't think your average person, let alone entrepreneur, is tapped into this quite as deeply as you are. I know they aren't and they don't know what's possible and they don't know what you're doing. And it is absolutely mind blowing. So I'm very excited to have you on today to talk about this. But I will say one of the things that you posted on Facebook that just really, really inspired me was your post about whether or not you were going to even keep your VA company. So for those that don't know, Jeff has a virtual assistant company. He's got several employees in the Philippines. How many employees did you have? Over 100, right? Yeah. I mean, at one point I had like 170 or so, but you know, I think we're we usually hover definitely over 100. <laughs> okay. So, and, and that alone is uh, phenomenal. You've done great work for your clients, of course, but what's so just beautiful about what you do is like you actually give a shit and you care about mm-hmm. your employees. Um, I've seen hurricanes go through the Philippines and you're raising money and you're building houses and helping them get back on their feet. You're changing lives. It's one of the reasons why I love you, man. And I love what you're doing and the impact that you're, you're creating. You're kind of the essence of what I like to have on this podcast of oh, Wired man. for Impact. So it's an honor. Um, and by well, the way, not to discount you what you said, but I don't even like using the word employee. So I just call everybody a team member because, you know, like I want to, I actually made a post today on my Facebook about how, you know, like I remember back in 2018 when I took a chance on a project management call, I actually have a team leadership call that we do. It's, it's, it's usually every morning at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. And so like, if you can't get a hold of me at 9am, you know why, <laughs> but usually, you know, I'm like the one who's telling people what to do and everybody's looking to me for guidance and leadership. And I took a really big chance back in 2018. And I just said to my team members, I said, how could we, be, how could we do this better? You know, like how, mm-hmm. how could we do this better? And I was just literally authentically and genuinely listening and and with an open heart like what can we do better what do, what do they not even like about their job mm-hmm. and it's just mind blowing how you know as like you said being impact driven you know how much impact you can make just by empowering other people so that you don't have to be the one who makes all the decisions and that has been a huge huge undertaking for my own self to kind of let go but man looking back transporting from 2018 uh, when I had that difficult decision to today, uh, it's like completely like I have a completely different life where I get to live on my terms and they're doing everything and they care just as much about the business, probably some of them even more than me. <laughs> this is this is what I try to inspire with entrepreneurs is that when you do that, when you um, when you have the humility and uh, the desire to allow people to be human, their productivity goes through the freaking roof. Like it's, this is, it's frustrating because a lot of people, I see a lot of entrepreneurs that are very driven, but it's their way or the highway. And yeah. um, and so you got a bunch of automatrons that follow them and they're miserable. They have no autonomy and uh, it, the morale suffers, the productivity suffers. And I'm like, hey, if, if you truly genuinely care about profits, this is way more profitable to give a shit. Care about your people, treat them right and watch your bottom line increase. De- devil's advocate on that, even if it's not as profitable, because honestly, the most profitable way to do a business is just to have you and no one else, and then just like run and run and run mm-hmm. and have no overhead. For me, I've seen it this way. I've actually, so since that 2018 call, every single one of my project management team, all my leaders, they all have their own assistant now. That was one of the things that they told me on that call. They said, you know Mm -hmm. what? We're doing a lot of this other work that bogs us down from truly being a leadership role. And I was like, wow. So I made an initiative right there that every single one of my leadership team was going to get an assistant. You know, Mm -hmm. what's funny. Two of those leaders, they actually bucked to me really hard. Like, oh, I don't want an assistant. I don't want to. Some of them had that scarcity mindset where they felt that maybe they could be replaced one day because they have Mm -hmm. someone 
who can do it all for them. Mm -hmm. But what's really crazy is just like what you said, I actually dipped down into the coffers and I said, is it worth, maybe I lower my profit margin, but I'm able to retain people and give them a life that they are very happy with and excel. I might have a lower profit margin because I know that, by the way, I know all my leadership team can do the job without an assistant. But now with the assistant, not only do they have a backup, which is amazing benefit that I didn't even think about, but they also have a partner in crime that keeps them accountable. And I've seen increased productivity from these guys. Mm -hmm. And it's really incredible what you can do when you just put the heads together and just genuinely and authentically say, how can we do things better? Mm -hmm. Fascinating, man. So the post that really intrigued uh, and inspired this call was the one where you shared just not too long ago that you almost lost your business yeah. and uh, some of the conflict that you ran into. Please tell that story because it's it's uh, very inspiring. Well, first, I want to tell your listeners how amazing Peter King is because Peter did something for me. I'm going to get emotional. So last year, I had the biggest scandal ever happened to me in my business where I had a client that I really built an amazing team of about 47 to 50 people for this one client building these remote teams for them, these virtual assistants, my VA staffer business. And I started getting some real interesting pushback from them. You know, it's a real estate brokerage, you know, mortgage company. So, you know, if you haven't heard that industry is kind of getting hurt a little bit. Yeah. So what ended up happening was they ended up poaching all of my team members, like 47 out of 50 people. And not only did I lose a million dollars a year in revenue, because that's how much that client was worth, but it also was a huge stab in the back because they had basically coerced and, you know, they, they, they made my team feel so good about working for them that they positioned me as the bad guy. They gave them big sign on bonuses and all sorts of stuff and was like, yeah, nothing you're doing is illegal because we're terminating our contract with them. So technically you don't work for him anymore. So you guys can just, um, you know, come work for us afterwards. You know, one of those little switcheroos. And I got, I had two of my mentors out of five, you know, I have about five to 10 mentors at any given time that are good at certain things. And two of my business mentors, I look up to a lot. They told me, Jeff, now's the time for you to sell the business. This is in November of last year, 2022. And they said, AI has come out. It's becoming more effective. AI is going to destroy humans. <laughs> Basically take all, you know, why would someone hire a Filipino VA when they could get an AI for, for 20 bucks a month, you know, to do mm -hmm. everything for them. And I contemplated it. I have to tell you, genuinely, I contemplated it. But instead, what I did was, and this is why I love Peter, the story I was telling you, Peter did something so beautiful for me. He actually sent out a physical letter to all of my clients, telling them my situation and offering them a really incredible offer to sign up and get a second VA or look at other services that we're doing. And um, I just want to say thank you for that first off, Peter. That was really incredible. So, whew, okay, collecting myself. <laughs> so what ended up happening was I said, nah, screw that. I went and did this humongous campaign. I got a bunch of VAs. We went from about $20,000, $25,000 in what we call online subscription recurring revenue. We were doing a, a lot of money at that time, but most of our client, you know, you have to imagine out of $150,000 a month in revenue, 70 to $80,000 of that was from that one client. So that's almost, that's more than half of our revenue at that time. So when I was like, oh no. So I, I did this campaign. I just went all out on the marketing side, put a really good, crazy offer together to help get my VA's place. And it worked. <laughs> it worked. I mean, I was still bleeding $29,000 a month, FYI. Um, and I only had about 100,000 in the bank. So I knew I had a three month runway. But something crazy happened. I just had this light bulb moment where I said, you know what? I'm going to fly to the Philippines. And I did in December of that year, last year. So right after that happened, I went to the Philippines. I got all my leadership team together in one room. And I said, we are not leaving here until we figure this shit out. <laughs> Is it okay to say shit? <laughs> 100%. Uh, so we did. And what we came up with was a plan on how to actually train our team, how to leverage AI, how to use AI so that they become more valuable to our clients instead of replaced by AI. 
And man, what the, what an amazing switch that had been. And the problem that I noticed with AI, and I think you'll uh, you'll have a good feel for this, is that there's no like proven method or whatever to integrate AI into your business. So I had to figure out a way to take what can I do in a general consensus that would work for pretty much all of my clients in every business that I know. And I came up with this idea. And actually, I want to give credit to, um, you know, some other people on my team, like Roselle and Kyla and Josh and even Jacqueline, my own assistant, um, who came up with this idea of why don't we create an AI employee that the VAs could use to do stuff for them, like marketing. Like I would never have a Filipino VA write my social media post because the English is like 90%, 80% there. Mm -hmm. But with ChatGPT, now you have an expert copywriter that speaks perfect English and you can train it to be a top tier copywriter in like not even an hour. And it can just take over all your social media content. So I was like, okay, we had content done. It could do newsletters, email newsletters. My assistant, Jacqueline, who's never made a newsletter in her life, has done over 70 newsletters to my existing VA staff or client base wow. using what we call an AI persona. That's what our AI employees are. We call them AI personas. And they all have different roles. We have sales copywriters, social media marketers. We have newsletter email specialists. Um, we have a, a personal branding assistant. We have a group manager. We have one for each of our brands. So we're literally creating these AI personas in a box. And that was when one of my clients was like, wow, this is incredible. You should sell this to other people. You should teach other people how to do it. So I launched that program. I did over $100,000 in sales for the AI persona method. And then I realized that, guess what? I was do now I was getting requests for AI consult calls. Can you come in here and just help me set this up for my business, whether they have a VA or not? Then I did another $30,000 in less than two months of AI consult calls. Mm. So then I was like, I'm onto something. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, clearly, clearly <laughs> you're onto something. Dude, I, what I come from the uh, Tony Robbins world. I've done, I did a lot of stuff with him back in the day. Basically it was a Tony Robbins groupie for a year. And oh, I love it. And yeah. Went one, of all my stuff client, one, one of my clients is a platinum lion or whatever. And they brought me to a couple of events and I was mind blown. Yeah, the, the people that you meet there is uh, worth its weight in gold. Totally. Um, but one of the lessons that he teaches is he asked the question to entrepreneurs, what business are you in? And then the follow-up question, what business are you really in? Ooh. And so you you might have said a few years ago or even just a year ago, what business are you in? Oh, I'm in the VA business. I help people. I, I provide virtual assistance. But what business are you really in? And and you had the intuition to realize that you were providing value and service ultimately to your end clients. Leverage. And it really, and it, so the, the VA wasn't really the business that you're in. You're in the, the leverage business. Yeah. And so obviously AI becomes a very powerful tool. Dude, it's just, it's so beautiful to see you reinvent what you're the, doing. And now it magnifies. The, awesome. the crazy part, Peter, is that you're exactly right. Five years ago, two years ago, one year ago, I would have said I'm in the VA business, right? Yep. And I have a passion for marketing. Like that's what I would say. I have a virtual assistant business and I learned marketing through the school of hard knocks, <laughs> you know, of yeah. trying to figure out how to, how to, how to survive. But now what I realized is, like you said, I'm in the business of leverage and whether it's a human or AI, or in my favorite case, a hybrid of both, that's the business I'm really in. I'm really in the business of helping people, you know, leverage human capital and AI capital to just get more done, to be more productive, to have a more fulfilling life where they can actually have that time freedom, that location freedom. Mm -hmm. And well, I'll tell you, that's a, that's a very in high demand thing. <laughs> yes, it is. So walk uh, somebody through exactly what you do, because I'm sure some people that are listening to this have toyed around with chat GPT. I have myself. I've taken some of your cues to create what I would consider on my end, like, how do I train this thing to be a world expert copywriter? And I've gotten some really interesting results. However, are you having to go in and train chat GPT every single time? Or it, does that persona, like now it exists and you can just ask it a question you don't have to prep it every single time. That's that what's beautiful. That's what's beautiful. Most of the people that are using ChatGPT are using it wrong. 
and they're going in there, they're creating a chat, they're asking to do some things. Instead of asking the chat GPT to do something, you should probably spend 30 minutes training it before you even ask it to do anything. Hmm. So there's a six specific steps that we teach in the AI persona method. It's a, it's a proven method on how to train an AI. The first is you want to actually make sure that the AI understands the role that it's going to play in your business. So you have to think about what would, well, think of it like an, AI, an employee, like I said, an AI persona is basically an AI employee. So what do I need this person to do? So for example, let's say you want that sales copywriter we we're talking about, right? You would basically describe what that role of a copywriter is and what it would do. And then you would educate it on your business. You would educate it on your target audience. You educate it on your own service offerings, your own product value, maybe the background and bio about yourself. If you're an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, maybe you're an agency owner where you've invested in your personal brand, which you and I know I mean, it's probably one of the most valuable things you can do, if, especially as an agency owner, is actually stand out of, a, against other people is just to have a really strong brand yourself. Mm -hmm. After you've educated it, then you start asking it some stuff. So one of the first prompts, and I, this is a free giveaway for everybody, one of the very first prompts, and it'll also tell you if you've educated it correctly. But after you educate it, one of the first prompts that I ask, I say, knowing this about me and my business, how could you help me serve my clients Ooh. or how can you help me fill in the blank, grow my social media presence, grow my personal brand, build my, you know, build my social media, you know, whatever, whatever you want it to do, like grow my okay. email list. Yeah. And it will literally have all that educational stuff. And it will know because it knows your audience so well, it knows you so well, it knows what you offer. It will have everything congruent to help you grow in a vertical fashion. And when I say in a vertical fashion, I mean, for example, I own the AI persona method. I also have the virtual assistant business. So when I ask it, how could you help me grow my business? It's going to say, well, we can create an email newsletter that goes out to entrepreneurs and digital agency owners. That's, you know, coaches, consultants, whatever, whoever's going to say on how to build their business and leverage. So they actually have a life, right? Why don't we have uh, an email newsletter that that shows people tips and tricks on how to do that? Why don't we create an ebook about how to leverage their, you know, how to leverage AI and virtual assistants in their business to to grow and whatever? It'll give you all these different options, and then all you have to do is say, "Fantastic, let's work on that." Please create this, right? C please create an outline. Here's another little tip for everybody. I am a very visual person, not sure if you are, but I like to see everything very beautiful. So what I'd like to do is I like to have it create a content outline for anything that I do, whether it's social media posts, whether it's a blog, whether it's um, an email newsletter series or something like that. And I, and I want it to lay it out in a table format. So next time that you actually ask it to create something for you, at the very end of it, ask this little question, just say, please create it in table format. And it's so beautiful, Peter. It's literally so beautiful the way it comes out. It's mind blowing that, and even the free version of ChatGPT, this is mind blowingly crazy stuff. And what excites me the most is the economic level place. Like this right here, this is ground zero, baby. Someone in the Philippines, in India, in South America, in Africa, in, you know, somewhere, who knows where in Eastern Europe, they have access to a free software, chat GPT and open AI. Mm -hmm. That is so powerful. It can literally make you money every day while you sleep. When you say table format, just for clarity's sake, it, it's just, is it like a spreadsheet? Like everything oh my, laid out yeah. beautifully? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, try it out. Anybody just go to, if you haven't even played with ChatGPT, just go to chat.openai.com. Okay. Peter will have the link for you guys. Educate it a little bit, you know, but even if you don't educate it, you can just say, create a content outline for my business. My business is whatever. Create a calendar, create it in the table format and just watch it create an Excel spreadsheet. And now yeah. using the new code interpreter, okay, this is getting nerdy level, but That's now right. using the code interpreter that just came out this week on Monday, you can now 
ask it to create an Excel spreadsheet for you and you can download it. Isn't mm. that crazy? It is crazy. Quick question before I ask you the next question. So when you train it, you said it takes like 30 minutes to train. Are you having to do that every single time? No. You log in? Oh. Or like so with the AI persona method, we teach everyone to treat every chat as an individual, as an AI persona, right? right? So when you have someone who's got knowledge about your brand, okay, let's say you have a couple brands. Like I highly recommend everyone have at least two brands. And here's here's why. Your first brand should be your personal brand. The second brand should be your business brand, okay? And the reason why is because your personal brand voice and your business are usually a little bit different. They might serve a different audience. They might have multiple things going on. Like for me, you know, I'm a huge individualist. You know, that's one of the reasons why I love the crypto scene. Same as you, um, you know, the blockchain, uh, by the way, big win today. Don't know if big you win saw today. I did, XR of course. XRP, yeah. XRP wow. was real. <laughs> that's another podcast. Tear, man. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but I'm, lo I'm loving my 25 to 27% boost in crypto today. Um, oh, dude, it's higher than that. Uh, is it? I oh, haven't dude, even seen. XRP is on a tear, yeah. <laughs> anyway, the point is, is that I like those types of things. But see, my virtual assistant brand, it, ha it doesn't need to know anything about crypto, right? It has nothing to do with it. So you should have your own personal brand with what your interests are, your own biography, what you're doing. And by the way, one of the first things that I like it to do to, to see it's a good test to capture if it understands me is after I educate it, I just ask it to write a bio for me, write a bio about myself mm -hmm. and then see if it's there. And if there's things missing, then you say, you know what? Here's a good here's a good option for you guys too. Let's just say you're like I don't even know what what I should give it to write a good bio about myself. Here's what you do. Here's a, here's another prompt magic for you. I want to write a bio for myself for my let's say LinkedIn account. All right. Say what do you need to know for me to build an incredible bio for me? And it will say, oh, well, you know, I'd like to know some of your accomplishments, maybe some stories in the past, maybe some challenges that you faced in the past, what you actually do, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then all you have to do is answer it. It'll say, thanks for the information. Here's your bio. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so just, I, I'm going to be a little bit annoying on this. Do you have a different chat GPT account for each persona or uh -huh. do you log into one and you call up the persona that you need in the moment? So I have one account on chat gpt on open ai and then i also use another app all right okay hold on <laughs> it's called magi okay now magi is the one that i use to actually share with my team i don't have that link on me but i'll make sure everybody gets the link okay because i'm actually working out a deal with the owner his name's dustin of magi and it one of the things that you, a lot of people don't know because everyone hears about ChatGPT is that there's another one called Claude, made by a company called Anthropic, and I hate to say it and admit it, but Claude is way better at certain things than ChatGPT. ChatGPT mm -hmm. is good because it has plugins. I also feel it's better at marketing language. But one of the things I like about Claude is that you can give it like I fed it a 184 page book from one of my mentors called the Copywriting Bible. It's one of the by Josh Fector. Um, he disappeared. You probably know Josh. He's from Banff Marketing, know. badass marketing for founders. Yeah. Like, that was from like 2018 too. Yep. Um, he used to go viral on LinkedIn every day, but he wrote a whole book about how to go viral and write viral content. And I basically fed it 184 pages to Claude and said, analyze this copywriting Bible and using the style, write a story about whatever. And it friggin' blew my mind how good it is. Even my mm. most recent, the last three days on my social media accounts have been stories that were created 100% by Claude and they are very good. And maybe Dude, they're seamless. I, yeah. I'll, you'll go to your page and you start reading. And then at the very bottom, it'll say, Hey, by the way, this was written by AI. I'm like, Oh shit. I thought it was Jeff. You know? If it wasn't for me putting the disclaimer that it was written by AI, <laughs> no one would even know. They don't, you do, you, you can't even know. We, I mean, we truly are, we're, well, depending on how you look at it, you're either, we're either in the matrix or we're getting out of the matrix, but either way you can leverage the matrix. Cause dude, this, it is, it is just phenomenal. So what other tool, so do you have a different account for each persona in Claude or does no. Claude know all your personas or. So, so that's what I was saying. Uh, I'm working out something with the owner right now to get my own AI personas built into Claude. Got it. So I'll have a, I'll have a link that specifically is tied to me. 
so that you can give your people. And anyone who joins in on that will actually get a lot of the pre-built stuff that I'm doing by default. So that's what I'm working out with the with the founder right now, Dustin. Dude, um, so brilliant. But, yeah. Well, I, so I mean, look, I want to support people and I want to build other people. I know how hard it is to, to do a SaaS. I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually about to release my own AI chatbot. I saw the post about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's called, it's called chataibot.io. And it's been a really big undertaking. The development team has been working really hard. But what I want is a way to do inbound and outbound chatbots, which we already have that functionality. But what I'm doing now is I'm giving it the ability to just type in your website. It will crawl your website and automatically build the bot for you. Cause that's the hard part mm -hmm. building the bot. Mm -hmm. The other part too is on our no code bot builder, you can literally drag and drop a module in there that allows you to give all the data about your brand, your website, you give it your website link, you, you drop it a PDF with your products. It'll have a product knowledge database and you'll just say, Hey, how can I help you today? Or what are the problems you're facing or whatever? And when they type in something, it will know from your own product knowledge, mm -hmm. it will be able to answer their question. And then like a professional salesman say, yes, we can help you with that. Matter of fact, we can help you with this, this, this. Here's how we do it. Book a strategy call and see how we can help. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the future, by the way. It, I mean, it's it's here. It's, you're doing it's it. It's the present. <laughs> yeah, it's the present. I mean, um, so what other tools do you use to leverage? Do you Are there graphic design tools that you integrate with this? Oh. Are there... Yeah. What, what kind of things are you doing with the man tools out there? I have been loving mid journey. I've had mid journey make some book covers for a new book coming out called the executive assistant playbook that I'm hoping to launch next month, but you know, things are taking forever. It's funny because it's not the AI's fault. It's like my own fault. Like I want to <laughs> release a bunch of things, but, but when I go through the review process, I'm like, ah, is it really ready? You know? Yeah. For example, I've got some serious feedback. I, I launched a book earlier this year called the AI Consulting Blueprint. And it's literally a small 24 page book. It's basically a nine step checklist of like how to set yourself up to become an AI consultant. And thinking, looking back on it now, I'm like, man, I should have just made that a lead magnet or something because a bunch of people bought the book and they're like, dude, all this is is a checklist. I'm like, yeah, that's what it says on the front. Nine step checklist. <laughs> People want to have like a full like hundred page. Here's how you do it step by step book. So now I'm like, OK, shit. Now that I got a three star rating on Amazon and, and two of the reviews are like, ah, oh, crappy book. So short. Read it on my bathroom in one hour and then threw it in the shitter, you know. Um, how and, dare you only provide value without fluff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sad part is, is I, I realized that in the book, I didn't give them like the step-by-step -step of like, here's what you need. To, well, I did. I told them here's what they need to do, but I didn't say specifically like, you know, I'm not giving them the advice. I'm just telling them what they need to do, like research, what AI specialty you want to go into. Are you in marketing? Are you in sales? Whatever. And then, you know, identify your target market. Who do you want mm -hmm. to sell to? Whatever. Like I did kind of basic stuff and you know, whatever. But anyway, the yeah. point is, is that I love mid journey. Um, Dolly has been really fun, but now you, you're seeing a bunch of open source come out, which is crazy, like stable diffusion, by the way, now's probably a pretty good time. I'm not giving a financial advice here, but man, Nvidia stock, anything with GPUs right now, because the processing power of these AI language models is going to be like nuts. It really is profound and, and groundbreaking technology. Um, are you using any AI for video and or music? Uh, not so much. I mean, I've used some of the video stuff. You know, there's a couple of good ones out there. I, I feel like, I feel like visually the pictures right now is the best. Like mid journey, I definitely think they have a heads up on the quality of graphics and stable diffusion as well. But, you know, I haven't really played around too much with the video. I've seen some crazy apps out there that are able to like render, you know, take an object and then make it turn into a video or they can take video. What I did here is that some versions of ChatGPT4 coming out with the code interpreter are going to be able to literally start doing video editing and stuff too. Like you can give it an image, like a GIF file, and then tell it to edit things. So I think that this is the very, very beginning of it all. Right now, I just am trying to be a sponge. That's all. Yeah. I'm just trying yep. to be a sponge. And even when people come into my program, like I launched the program early this year and so much has changed since early this year. 
So that's why this is the first time ever I've included a group access so that people get access to me twice a week where they can just mm. ask questions. I, I do a 90 minute call every, every other week where people come in and we, we talk about what's new and what's happening. And, you know, even when things change, like when I first launched the program, you couldn't share a chat. Now you can go into chat GPT and click the share button and share a chat with anybody. Mm. So, and code interpreter from this week. I mean, now let me, uh, all right. I want to blow your audience's mind with something that I just did. I have a spreadsheet that has every single person who's ever joined my programs. They've bought my programs. They've joined my groups, whatever. It says when they purchased, what they purchased, why they purchased. Cause we actually say, what was the main reason why you wanted to buy the program or join the group or whatever. And it has all those reasons there. And then it'll say like, you know, their, their experience level using AI or virtual assistants, whatever. And we were able to use a code interpreter to analyze exactly why people joined the group. It made, it even made a word cloud of the main things that people said. Mm. And then it made a bar graph separating all of them into related categories. Like they wanted to increase their knowledge of AI. Um, believe it or not, like a third of the people that joined the program were just because they like me. Jeff, <laughs> you know, um, and I believe that, it. I believe it. That, that one was kind of funny to me. I was like, one of the biggest words on the word cloud was Jeff. I'm like, Jeff, really? <laughs> um, so like, this is now like, let me, let me, let me interrupt you for just a second because yeah. you're hitting on something that I think is paradigm changing. There are so many people out there that think that AI is going to replace all of us. And there is obviously some merit to that. However, we're still human beings and we're still learning and following and connecting with each other. So the fact that you're presenting this incredible offer that is leveraging AI technology, the reason why a lot of them, a lot of your customers are coming to you is because of Jeff. <laughs> you know, We still have that human element. And I love that you're bringing the human element to AI because it it shows, it lights up a path, a vision for, I think, a lot of people to, yes, we're going to need to think differently. We're going to have to change the game, but we're still here and we're still needing to create and provide value. And this is a beautiful example of that. You know, and, and actually, even with the human aspect of it all, like, I think one of the reasons why the program has been so successful, I actually have almost 40, I think we have almost 50 certified AI consultants already. And we just launched the program two months ago. What's really interesting about this is that the whole purpose of what I teach people with the AI persona method is how to create human-like AI, mm -hmm. like that understand your business, that understand your target audience, that really understand the pain points, that really understand the desires, that understand who you are and can represent you in a way that's very human-like. And I think that that's one of the things that's going to be very important moving forward is in a world of automation and AI it's never been more important to be human. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I did uh, after watching some of your posts and you like got me super excited, I went back with my personal assistant and I was like, dude, go read Jeff's posts and let's start to fuck around with this because this is so cool. <laughs> and I, I asked ChatGPT, I said, are you familiar with Joseph Campbell's hero's journey? Uh, of course. You know, I was like, well, what are the, what is it? 12 different stages and it reported back. And I said, okay, if I'm, uh, selling a crypto product. I'm working on creating an info product for crypto, helping people get into crypto because it's a technical you know, hassle. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I said, what questions do you need to ask me if I'm the hero essentially in this journey, et cetera? And it asked me these incredibly in-depth questions about you know, my past and my story and what conflict did I run into? What did you really learn on that? And I was like, oh shit. And it took me, the longest part of training the AI was me having to think through and reflect on what my own journey was. And it was like, in a weird way, it helped me be more human. You know what I mean? And I was like, that was pretty a, a profound shift. And then when I gave it the answers and I said, now write a hero's journey, I'm reading it. I'm like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> that's a pretty incredible little story. Yeah. That, you yeah. know, it, uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, I actually, I actually had a conversation with someone that I respect a lot who actually told me that a lot of my viewpoints were irrelevant, which <laughs> kind of hit me in the heart. You probably read that post yesterday. It's interesting because one of the reasons why he said that was because we had an argument over the future of AI. And, you know, I get it. Maybe some of it is because he's in denial because, you know, he is a social media manager for a big brand. 
and doesn't believe that the AI can do what a human can do. But, <laughs> you know, if you use AI correctly, you can actually help the human creativity. Because like what you said, it's going to ask you, hey, what are these things that, you know, like help, help me develop my own story? Like I helped one of our certified AI consultants redo his bio and his brand. And his, his name's Mike and uh, Mike Finelli. And his company is called Lightsaber. And it's a, it's a lightsaber because lightsaber he loves Star Wars. And I was like, well, where is anything about Star Wars in your brand? He goes, nowhere. It's just a funny little, you know, Easter egg that I put into my, I just call my company Lightsaber. I'm like, okay, but you love Star Wars. Oh, I love it. I'm obsessed with Star Wars. I said, well, why don't we integrate that? And I was on a call with the other certified consultants and they were laughing at me, thinking I was crazy too. And I said, I said, people love the human story of it. So let's go into it. Like even treat me. Why the hell is the company named Lightsaber? Mm -hmm. You know, it's called like light, Lightsaber Consulting or something like that. And he's like, well, I mean, I love oh, like my friends joke around and call me, you know, instead of Obi-Wan Kenobi, it was OBM Kenobi because he's an <laughs> online business manager. So instead uh, of Obi-Wan Kenobi, OBM Kenobi. So sense. I said, that's funny. I said, that's funny. I said, does anybody think that's funny? They're like, yeah, that's funny. And we basically said, okay, well, I want you to write a bio for this guy, Mike Finelli, who's a certified AI consultant to the AI persona method. And here's what he helps his clients do. Here's his background. We copied and pasted his friggin' LinkedIn profile, put it on there and said, okay. And, you know, I said, write a story like the Star Wars intro screen, right? <laughs> long, nice. long, long ago in a galaxy yeah. far, far away, right? Yeah. And, and it wrote this whole bio about him like that. And when we read it out, like everybody was like, mm. holy crap, that was incredible. This was so fun. Yes, I would totally read that. I'm like, that's how you stand out. You mm -hmm. stand out by being different. You stand out. And we use the AI to create that story. And we we told it to be creative. You know, like I wouldn't probably be able to write a good, you know, galactic Star Wars um, story, but it was able to because it has all the data about star wars online and it came mm -hmm. up with some really cool stuff too man it was like yeah he's got some jedi tricks he can show you how to do this it was so cool and he was like and like the laser beam of a lightsaber go into your business and give you precision results and the, you know like it was so funny with the puns and it was so mm -hmm. good and everybody was just left like completely shocked so use ai to increase your productivity but also your creativity and that's where I think that people are missing. Mm, killer point. Um, circling back a little bit to the video and graphic design stuff, are there any tips that you can share with the audience about how to create better content, better imagery, better video, better music? So, yes. How about we'll stick on the imagery? Because I right. that one I've definitely played around with. I created a mid-journey AI persona that all it does is create amazing prompts for mid-journey. And what, and there's also a plugin, by the way, called Photo Realistic on ChatGPT4. And that will preload all sorts of different variables. It preloads all the cool cameras, it, all the cool lenses, all the cool focal points, all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. you just describe in a short way, like, hey, I want to create a picture of a motorcycle on a street in the sunset in a desert. And then it will come back like, a glowing sunset makes the, the paint of the motorcycle glow as the wet road with the orange, you know, lines across the middle in the desert with cactus. And, you know, like it's a, it's a dramatic photorealistic photo using a Mark five, seven, whatever camera with a, you know, 1.4 focal point and has a aspect ratio of whatever. And like, it has all that stuff built in so that us who are stupid about photography can create amazing photos mm -hmm. <laughs> with built in information. So I would just say, go and try this plugin called photo realistic. I think you're going to enjoy it and you're going to get some really crazy uh, output. Mm. Awesome. 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 Um, I wanted to just quickly ask you, cause I know you're in the crypto space. Are you still doing the gaming as well? Yeah, actually, Miria is one of the investments we did. They just got done launching their node system. So I think that people are feeling a little bit more confident. You know, like obviously, for those of you who follow the crypto scene, 
it's been a rough run the past couple of years and even rougher when, you know, Sam Bankman Freed decided to, uh, you know, embezzle all that money and blow up FTX. And then, of course, the SEC bringing down all sorts of regulations and, well, filing lawsuits against Polygon, against uh, Ripple, Ripple, against Solana. So a lot of these projects really got hit hard. But, you know, obviously what happened today with Ripple, um, the federal judge says ruled that it was not a security which is good news and also uh, give some precedence for other lawsuits that are that are happening. It was a federal. So, I mean, you know, there's only one higher than federal and that's the Supreme Court. So I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. So uh, part of the reason why I'm asking you that is because we in the world are facing unprecedented change, I believe, in the way that we interact economically at a very fundamental level, which is right. dramatically changing the whole landscape. Uh, and it's going to affect every entrepreneur, every business owner, all all of us. What threats do you see possibly with AI with respect to an entrepreneur? Is there something that we should be looking out for? What do you expect? Maybe not just a threat, but what do you expect? What what other positive news and also maybe things that are concerning that we need to be aware of? Well, one thing's for sure. You know, and I don't it's it's crazy because it used to, if I would have said something like this a few years ago, we would just shrug it off and laugh it as a conspiracy theory. But if there's anything we've learned the last couple of years about conspiracy theories is that the only difference between the truth and a conspiracy theory is like six months. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> getting, know? it's going to shrinking. Like... It's like six weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but sadly the government is starting to use the AI against us and um, you know, they're, they're hyper analyzing the data. They're looking at the transactions that we do every day the freedom to transact is becoming limited and limited and there the the different venues that we've used uh you know for blockchain and crypto to stay you know quasi anonymous and have that freedom to transact are, are being taken away and to be quite honest it's probably given more of a threshold for bitcoin just because bitcoin is the only token right now that no one could control there's every and I and I I mean there are some that can't be controlled as well, but no one can go to the founders of Bitcoin and say, yo, you gotta go. It's there's so many, it's all just a giant blockchain that's it, it, like Ethereum, you know, they roll out updates. They can they can roll out an update to destroy any of you, take your money away. Now we found out that even the MetaMask browser is tracking IP addresses of people. Mm. So we live in a more surveillance state and unfortunately in the world of crypto that ev where everything is available and visible on the blockchain it just means we have to be more and more careful about that technology and by the way i'm not trying to sound you know cryptic here <laughs> but in all reality it's probably you know between cash and crypto i mean the dollar is just getting destroyed inflation is so high it's getting out of control ridiculousness. Now we found the government has been working to spy on social media agencies and force them to, to push a narrative. So, and again, like I said, it's just crazy to think that all these conspiracy theories have come true. So at this point, I'm weighing every single conspiracy theory. I'm just weighing them all because yeah. it seems like they can all seem to be coming true. Yeah. So I'm just keeping a very skeptic attitude, but also... I'm looking at very, uh, I'm just looking at different ways, like the old saying, not my keys, not my crypto, yeah. right? So yeah. keep keep control of your assets. Don't let, you know, I don't trust pretty much any centralized platform. I don't trust Binance. I don't trust Coinbase. I don't trust anybody because now we've seen lots of reports where the government can go in there and just take your shit away. Even, even on those little thumb drives, the ledgers, now we're finding out that ledger has been subpoenaed by the government and has been able to take people's stuff. So you can't even yeah. trust your ledger, guys. That's how messed up it is. On that note, do you? how do you, not to turn this into a crypto conversation per se, but how are you storing your crypto securely if you can't even have it on a hard wallet? That's exactly the right question. You better believe I ain't saying that in public. You better believe I ain't saying that in public. That's for a private conversation, you know, maybe yeah. the, the Peter King crypto group or something. Um, there's better, absolutely no freaking way I'm going to say in public where I'm going to store my shit. Because of course. 
Because you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like firearms. You know, if anybody ever comes and says, "Hey, where's your firearms?" I'm gonna be like, you know what? There was a tragic boating accident. And I have no clue where they are anymore. They're in the bottom of a river somewhere. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a not it's the a, answer you wanted, buddy. I know. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't necessarily mean specifically where you're keeping it, but like if, uh, it. if, if a ledger yeah. or a treasure or something like that is hackable or whatever. Shit, if we can't keep them on a hard wallet, where are you gonna what are you gonna do with it? You're gonna think, have your what you're gonna have is a block of titanium with your seed key written on it, and you have to store it somewhere that the government and your you know abusive in-laws or whatever don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's the world we're in. Um, That's sadly you, where we're at. It really is. Do you have any reservations about feeding so much personal stuff into AI, into the chat GPT? I would never feed it things that I don't want it to know that I wouldn't yeah. want the public to know. And, yeah. you know, like for me, I'm pretty transparent. You know, I feed it a lot of stories. You know, I've also like for me, even I just had a partner agreement. So I, so the AI persona method, I had a, a I had a met someone in a, a mastermind in Miami who teaches copywriting to the French market. Doesn't sell to the American market, just the French market. And when I showed her what the AI persona method is, she was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I, I could sell this to my French market. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And she's like, okay, well, here's what we should charge this and that, whatever else not. Let's just be 50, 50 partners. I said, great. I said, Hey, you know, it'd be cool. Why don't we create a contract writing AI persona to write the contract for us? She's like, you can do that. I'm like, I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> so we did a Facebook live inside my own Facebook group, showing people live how we we're going to create this agreement. And we said, okay, well, here's the parties that are involved. Um, we even asked it, like, what do you need to know from us to write this contract, right? Like, here's what we're trying to do, 50-50 partner agreement to, to basically license the AI persona to the to the French market. She's going to be the teacher for the French market. How do we do this? Oh, here's what I need to know. How long is the contract for? What's the what's the split? What's this? What's that? What's this? You know, where's the contract going to be and whatever. And I just filled in the blanks live on a call with her. We shared, I shared the screen and we did it together. And then it came back and she was like, wow, this is really good. And then my assistant, I gave that to my assistant. My assistant made it into one of those little digi signs or whatever. And we mm -hmm. both signed the agreement and we're like, okay, we're officially partners. Amazing. So, I mean, the future is here. And like I said, I wouldn't put sensitive information that you don't want to be public, but as long as it's things that, you know, supposedly, by the way, I don't know if you heard this, supposedly Microsoft, U EULA, e -E -U -L -A or whatever, says that they're not training their, they're not training their AI based on your data, supposedly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's some interesting things you could do with Microsoft Word that has AI integrations and things like that, where they supposedly only work on your data and it's not fed back to a server somewhere. Yeah, and well, I just want to reiterate, you can also just download your own damn language model and not even connect it to the internet if you want to. Mm -hmm. And you can train it there on a server box. And there's open source stuff like Llama, the, the leaked Facebook one, that's completely fantastic. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. as good as ChatGPT4 quite yet, but there's open source language models you can download, run on a server. And completely have it offline. So it's your own language model trained only for you and only you. Hmm. Is there, uh, where could somebody go to get more info on that? Check out a website called Hugging Face. Hugging, Hugging Face. Face. <laughs> uh, it's a funny name, I know. I know. But there's all, there's all sorts of LLMs on there, language learning, language learning models, learning language models. Um, that people can download and play around with. Some of them are so powerful and they don't, then they'll, they're even small enough to work on a cell phone. You could just use a cell phone to run it. Wow. So we're just, this is just the beginning, man. Just the I beginning. Know. I know. We're and just getting started. Here's the craziest part, brother. I went on Amazon and I bought two, not one, two micro mini PCs that are this big. Okay. They come with 256 solid state drive. They come with eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. They come with like a 3.4 gigahertz processor, um, you know, USBs galore, dual dual monitor, HDMI and display port, whatever, like for $159. Mm. It, it, come on, man. Yeah. This is, we, we have never had so much power in our lives. And imagine if we as the human regular consumer have this power imagine what the government or the military has i know i know so i'm just saying guys you know like 
we we gotta be we gotta be watchful. That's all I'm saying. Is that you know, imagine what we've got and multiply it by a thousand. That's what someone else got. Yep. Um, that's not a conspiracy as, theory. That's the truth. <laughs> it is the truth. I mean, it, yeah, I've talked to military guys offline, and some of the stuff they've shared with me is pretty wild. As we start to wind down the conversation, can you give us? I mean, you've shared several examples already, but is there any examples that you can share from a actual client, the results that they've gotten uh, that is maybe the most inspiring to you that you're maybe the most excited about? Uh, you know what? I want to share a story from one of my people, uh, Stephanie Naviscus, who, oh, I don't know if she, she probably wouldn't like me sharing the story public, but I'm going to share it anyway, because I love her. <laughs> but she came to me. I So I'm faculty at digitalmarketer.com and I met her there in person at one of their events in Austin, Texas. We've been following each other for a while and she saw that I was launching the AI consulting program and she was completely blown away. She actually booked an AI consult call with me first on how she could leverage AI for her digital marketing business. And she has three or four copywriters that work for her. And when I went into the call... <laughs> We were just talking, me and her were just talking about this yesterday on our little uh, AI consultant call that we have, that when I went in there, I did not, you know, kind of understand the room that was there. I didn't know that they were the copywriters on our team. And the first thing I opened up, I was like, yes, this is going to revolutionize your agency. I used to have five copywriters. Now I only have one. And that one person does more, oh, more no. than five. And you could just, you could see yeah. the sweat bubble <laughs> down. Yeah. And she was like, well, that's not why Jeff's here. Jeff's not here to do that. I'm not here to replace you guys. I'm here to superpower you guys. I was like, yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so, so she told me that she was struggling, you know, she, she was struggling for payroll and she f- functioned specifically in the pet business. And she basically said, you know, between Amazon and and everything, you know, it's like they're getting really beat up and she's having a hard time keeping the retainers going. And uh, so when I told her, I said, well, you should think about, you know, showing your clients how to use AI in their businesses. And she's like, really? And I said, yeah, I'm launching an AI consulting program. I told her the price. She was like, oh, she goes, "Um, I don't even have that right now. But what if we did a split pay? And my goal would be to make, you know, 10K over the next 30 days. So it would basically, you know, triple her investment or quadruple it. It's 2,500 mm-hmm. bucks to join the program. It, as of today, guys, I'm just saying, it's probably going to be more by the time you hear this. Subject to change, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Subject to change. 2,500 bucks to get certified right now. But what ended up happening was she messaged me 23 days. Oh, I actually made her a bet. I said, well, if you make 10K, I'll send you a plaque. She goes, oh, well, it's on. I'm going to make 10K <laughs> easy. I'm like, all right. 23 days later, she made 10K. And then she sent me the screenshot. I was like, wow, she's doing AI consult calls. And then she did 20K, not even 40 days, 40 days in total. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because she said that her and her husband had been planning a trip to Europe for 11 years, but they never could afford it. You know, they were just there. She wasn't sure if they were able to afford it. And obviously she just had 20K injected into her business. She's like, let's go. So -hmm. she had her first family vacation in like 11 years. And uh, I have to admit, in my mind, I was thinking, I I didn't realize, you know, since we're on the impact, you know, podcast here, um, I didn't realize the impact that just the education that I provide did Mm. for people. Mm. And it, it, it was probably one of the best feelings I've ever experienced, just knowing that I've helped provide that opportunity for her now don't get me wrong she's a hustler she's a killer she's been in digital marketing for a long time (laughs) she's awesome your results may vary but the fact that she was able to go back to her existing client base and rake in another twenty thousand dollars in sales when she's saying that she can't even afford a split pay it's funny because she on the 23 days later when she got the 10k she goes oh where where can i pay you the rest of the money i'm like well it's already on automatic it's going to happen in 30 days she goes well sweet (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) so she ended up becoming the very first certified agency so she loved the program so much she actually ended up signing up the other three copywriters she has to go through the program Mm. so now they're the very first certified agency in the program so it's really cool that's brilliant could somebody come to you without any real experience without an audience get get certified that's what's really crazy about this that's what's really crazy about this every business needs ai I mean, whether they know it or not, whether they're in denial, like the story I said earlier, (laughs) um, really, there's only two types of businesses left on this earth. 
right? The ones that are integrating and adapting and evolving and integrating the AI to the business. And then there's the businesses that are getting left behind by those ones, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So like everybody knows it too. And nobody has time. Nobody wants to say, oh, how am I? No one's going to stop with their day-to-day businesses and say, hey, let me learn AI in my business. They would rather hire a trusted consultant that can come in for a 60, 90 minute session, analyze what they've got, show how they can build an AI persona to do certain things. You know, this is what's beautiful too. Companies that already have team members, they can create these AI personas to supplement and complement things that their their team members or employees are weak at, Mm -hmm. right? Or if they have something that, like I said earlier, like let's say you don't have a sales copywriter on your team and you're just hiring out a sales copywriter here and there to do things. Now you can have a full-time AI copywriter that's probably better than 90% of the copywriters that you've ever hired in the past. It always meets delivery dates. It never complains when you ask for revisions. It doesn't charge you more. It doesn't have a baby. <laughs> you know, it doesn't take breaks. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't cry, you know, doesn't get divorced, you know, doesn't go through manic depression and just disappear for a week. Which by the way, I've I've had every single one of those on my team. So you just you know. Yeah, you're um, speaking from experience. Um as a business owner, I've had all of those things happen as a human. I've had people that just were amazing and I thought we're going to be in a leadership role just literally quit and have a mental breakdown. I mean, mm-hmm. I've had so many different things happen and th- that's one of the things I love about AI. You can help your team avoid that burnout and breakdown by having the things that they don't want to do, have the AI do it for them. Yeah. And that's really- so you don't have to have any experience even, you know, because it's such a, such a new world that the process that I teach you, which is creating an AI persona, which is creating the AI employee for businesses, there's not a single business in the world that this won't help. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, when people go through the program, the whole idea is to, is to empower them to be able to go into any business and create an AI employee, an AI persona that can handle whatever it is they need, whether it's marketing, sales, customer service, copywriting, whatever. My exciting part is, is that every single client call I've had and every single client call that my AI certified AI consultants have had, every single time the client is mind blown. And unlike traditional consulting and coaching practice, where you're basically getting on a call and telling them what to do and giving them homework, you're actually building a bot with them live, this AI persona that you're going to hand over to them and it's going to do all the stuff they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. You're creating a relationship. You're creating a bond with someone for life that friggin' adores you. And it's like, you're seen as the biggest like solution provider ever. And that's what mm-hmm. I love about AI. It's like, boom, here you go. Bot. <laughs> it really sells itself. The other thing that uh, to, to wrap up this conversation that I, obviously I'm a fan and I've been, you know, I've been patting you on the back this entire conversation uh, <laughs> certainly is merited, but uh, truly, truly, Jeff, like I think a lot of people right now are in contraction mode, a little mm-hmm. bit fearful, uh, uncertain what's going to happen. And you're providing a powerful example, a powerful light and for those that have the emotional fortitude to expand while everybody else is contracting, dude, the sky's the fucking limit. It's right unbelievable. Now. There's so much opportunity. And you're oh. one of those people that continues to put out inspirational, legitimate, practical, you know, actionable content. And I really value that. And I really appreciate you and and what you're, and Thank you. I, well, and, and I know this is probably goes without saying, but it's a testament to your team as well. I see your team constantly supporting you and that's a testament to you, of course, as well, but you've got a a beautiful thing going, man. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, Peter. You know, it's always a pleasure joining you. I'm sure this is a podcast two of like 20 we're going to do over the next. I hope so, man. (laughs) I hope so. We'll do a crypto one next, go deep into all that shit. Sounds good. Yeah, it's crazy. (laughs) Oh, Jeff, real quick, before you go, tell me again real quick where people can go if they're interested in finding out more info on the AI persona. Oh, I am the luckiest gold mine ever. I actually own the domain name AIPersonaMethod.com. Well <laughs> so done. you can go there. And if you don't want to learn and you're just like, hey, I want to get an AI consultant, we actually have the ability for you to either become a consultant or find a consultant. Or if you just want to learn the method, you can find a, a link to get the course. Um, Brilliant. but, uh, we, you know, I think, you know, whatever you want, you want to do a shortcut, just get a consultant, look at the directory and reach out to them. Awesome. All right. Thanks again, man. And thanks again for an awesome conversation. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to this episode of Wired for Impact. If you're interested in creating and expanding your impact, be sure to visit us online at impactnow.com.